What is idiopathic scoliosis? When a patient receives a diagnosis of scoliosis, they often don't understand what actually scoliosis is. And scoliosis is an unnatural sideways curvature of the spine with an associated rotation, meaning there must be a twist and a bend within the spine. The rotation is typically into the concavity of the scoliosis, and the Cobb angle measurement needs to be 10 degrees or greater to determine whether there be a minimal amount of scoliosis to be diagnosed as scoliosis. Now, the word idiopathic actually means there's means unknown cause. So when we, somebody's diagnosed with idiopathic scoliosis, there's no associated single cause with the scoliosis developing. 80% of all diagnosed scoliosis cases are classified as idiopathic. So it's by far the largest group of scoliosis cases that exist. And there's many different theories on why the scoliosis can actually be occurring in that child or in that adult patient. Unfortunately, the other 20% may have known causes like neuromuscular scoliosis, congenital scoliosis, degenerative scoliosis, and traumatic scoliosis. And even within those four categories, there's many subcategories that are associated with um, scoliosis developing. But in, in, in adolescent idiopathic scoliosis, which is the most common type of scoliosis that's diagnosed, and this is when patients are diagnosed with idiopathic scoliosis between the ages of 10 and 18. So idiopathic scoliosis is the diagnosis, and then adolescent is the age group. We can also have juvenile idiopathic scoliosis, infantile idiopathic scoliosis, adult idiopathic scoliosis. And all that is, is when the age of the patient and their diagnosis. And idiopathic means there's no other associated causation. Meaning if we can't find one of the other four things, some type of trauma that caused their scoliosis, a hemivertebra in their spine that could be responsible for their scoliosis. They have some type of associated neuromuscular condition, or they have degenerative scoliosis only tends to happen in the adult stages. If they can't find any of those four things, then we say, okay, by default, it's is idiopathic. Now, unfortunately, many patients are diagnosed as idiopathic scoliosis because there wasn't a thorough workup done. That means they missed something, some type of neuromuscular findings, some type of previous trauma that could be associated with the scoliosis. Maybe they could even possibly miss a hemivertebra. So something could be missed. Don't assume you have uh, idiopathic scoliosis if you didn't have a, f a thorough workup by a scoliosis, somebody who specializes in scoliosis, to see if maybe one of those other four conditions could be possibly prevalent. Now, is idiopathic scoliosis or adolescent idiopathic scoliosis progressive? Well, adolescent sco idiopathic scoliosis is the most progressive of all the types of idiopathic scoliosis because this is when kids go through their most growth phase. And we know scoliosis is progressive more, most rapidly during growth. So therefore, scoliosis can range from many different severities, from mild to moderate to severe to very severe because it's the amount of progression that occurs during growth that typically leads to what size you're gonna have. Now, at this progressive state, in adolescent stage, this is where most scoliosis are diagnosed, and they're not diagnosed because a patient's having pain or discomfort. They're normally diagnosed because of some kind of posture or asymmetry. And this posture asymmetry and this no initial diagnosis isn't necessarily mean this is where the person's gonna stay, especially if they're pre-puberty. If you diagnose a 10 or a 12 year old person who hasn't gone through growth yet, and they got a 30 or 40 degree curve with them, some type of postural deformity, and they're experiencing no pain, many parents discount this as, uh, as being a problem. Oh, the person, they feel fine, they just look a little different, so we're not gonna worry about it. But the problem is this person's still gonna grow. And as they grow, the curve has a chance of progressing. And how much they progress is an unknown variable. We have no way of predicting that. Some curves may progress you know, only five or 10 degrees, but some can progress 105 degrees. The biggest curve I've seen still progressing in an adolescent has been 155 degrees. And now the opinion can very quickly changes because now you're seeing drastic postural differences, drastic differences in the body. So therefore, never take a small curve lightly in an adolescent patient, that especially so has a chance of growing. And the more growth they possibly could have, the more likely they are to progress. Now, does idiopathic expect, affect scol idiopathic scoliosis? Does it affect adults as well? Well, yes. The most common type of, of scoliosis in the adult form is actually idiopathic scoliosis, and it's one of two types. It's patients that knew they had scoliosis as an adolescent, and they're now in the adult form, or it's patients that were never diagnosed in the adolescent stage, meaning the curve never became big enough. But now in the adult form, posture problems aren't the number one in, uh, cause of diagnosis. It's actual pain. They start experiencing pain somewhere in their 40s or 50 years of age. They go get an x-ray and they're told they actually have scoliosis. And they're like, they're the first time they've ever been told they have scoliosis because it was never diagnosed as an adolescent.
The second most common type of scoliosis in adult form is something called degenerative scoliosis. Now, degenerative scoliosis is very often diagnosed as, uh, or told that it's, it happens because of natural age-related spinal degeneration. Well, I believe that's completely untrue. There's nothing, there's nothing associated with natural degeneration of the spine and scoliosis. Um, in fact, spinal degeneration and scoliosis, if that was natural, that means every single patient when they're you know, in their age would have scoliosis, and we know that's not true. So therefore, I believe it's some type of misalignment that remains uncorrected, but it's a small misalignment that remains uncorrected for years, if not decades, leading to asymmetrical degeneration, and the asymmetrical degeneration in that area causes a curve to develop because it's not developing or degenerating or aging normally. It's kind of like an underlying car. If a car is not aligned properly, but a slight misalignment, like it's not like your car's gonna fall apart, just one tire is gonna wear faster than the other three and it's gonna wear asymmetrically, meaning it's not gonna wear evenly. Well, imagine that happening for 10, 20, 30 years in your body. Well, that's gonna to lead to this asymmetrical degeneration, which will cause a curve to occur. Now, even though adults are no longer growing, unfortunately, there is progression in the adult stage. And the progression is related to two things, size of curve, age of patient. And these two things tend to snowball with each other, meaning as curves get bigger and as a patient gets older, the curve will progress further. Now, like I mentioned, idiopathic scoliosis is most often diagnosed in adolescents because of some kind of postural asymmetry, shoulders, hips, ribs, on, on level, where in adults, idiopathic scoliosis is most often diagnosed because of pain because the progression in the adult form is a result of gravity over time. And this compression of, of the spine causes pain in the adulthood where the progression in the adolescent case is because they're growing and they're elongating and that doesn't cause any type of pain. Regardless of either being an adult or a child, a, co a common test that's used to determine if they actually have scoliosis is something called Adams Ford bending test. Adam Fordham's bending test with, the, in the, with also a scoli meter can actually look at something called trunk rotation and posture deviations to see if there's a possible scoliosis go, going on. But again, posture can only be such a good indicator if number one, is the posture easily noticeable? Meaning some body types, posture deviations are easier to notice than others. Some scoliosis cases, I mean, the size of curve and the way the curve develops, it's easier to notice the posture deviation versus other. Meaning if a person has a very symmetrical S curve, meaning one curve, the upper curve and lower curve are very balanced and very neutral, or I mean, very equal in size, meaning 40 over 40, they may posture maybe look okay. Where if somebody has a very asymmetrical curve, meaning you only have one curve going off to one side and say it's only 25 degrees, the posture may look worse on the 25 degree curve than the 40 degree curve that's perfectly balanced. So posture, can only be as visible as the curve is actually progressed. And of course, body types. Patients that are bigger may be harder to notice their posture deviations than patients that are really lean and thin. So the best way to determine a scoliosis is actually on an X-ray. X-rays actually can look at the spine itself and we can measure something called a Cobb angle. And a Cobb angle is what places the severity of the scoliosis on a scale from mild to severe. Once the X-ray is taken, and the diagnosis is actually made, we can make the diagnosis specifically based upon the patient's age, where the curve is located, the condition, and the severity to actually understand what's going on with their scoliosis. And like I mentioned, the majority of cases, the majority of cases are diagnosed as idiopathic scoliosis. Now, idiopathic scoliosis means we don't understand what's actually causing it. Now, a lot of patients feel like, okay, if we don't understand what's actually causing the scoliosis, there's no way we can actually treat it. And I'd like to say that's not untrue. Um, we can't actually cure scoliosis, but we can manage scoliosis, meaning we can't cure scoliosis, but we can manage scoliosis to affect the outcome that it can have or the effect it can have on the body. So I kind of think of it like an earthquake, meaning we know exactly what causes earthquakes, meaning we, the plates shift, it affects the building, the building structures could collapse and fall down. But if we corrected the cause, meaning we reshifted the plates back to where they were, the building isn't gonna grow back up. Like we have to still rebuild the building because the earthquake affected the building structurally. Whatever causes scoliosis in an idiopathic case, 
it doesn't matter whether we can correct it or not, we can still rebuild the building. Meaning we may not be able to know exactly what caused your scoliosis, but if we can deal with the structural component of scoliosis, we can control the effect and rebuild the spine back into a straighter alignment and control the effect it's having on the body. Because remember, in the majority of cases, the idiopathic scoliosis causes a very small amount of the curve, maybe five or 10 degrees while they're growing and develop, while, while it initiates the curve. It's what, its growth is what causes it to progress, not what caused it. So it's you growing with a curve, it's what led to 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 degrees of progression, not what actually caused it. So there's a big room for reduction if we treat curves sooner and earlier in life. At Scoliosis Reduction Center, we offer a comprehensive scoliosis assessment to number one, to find out if you actually truly only have idiopathic scoliosis. We wanna diagnose and treat the scoliosis as early in life as possible and as small as possible because smaller curves always respond better. However, we are successful in treating severe scoliosis cases and manage them. And also even in late stage idiopathic scoliosis that's become very painful and progressive, we can also manage those as well. But bottom line is the younger the patient, the better the results, the smaller the curve, the better the results. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.